it's about the consistency, right? It's about, um, you know, uh, you know, doing it every single day and committing forever. You are now listening to the Savage Marketer Podcast with Jeff J. Hunter. Are you ready for a show with no fluff, no BS, and savage marketing strategies from the best in the game? Then it's time to join the community at savagemarketer.com and gear up for another podcast episode. Here's your host, Jeff J. Hunter. Savages, it is the very first episode of 2021. You are now listening to the Savage Marketer Podcast. And today I've got an incredible savage himself. His name is John Dwoskin. And we're going to talk about something very important. And this is 2021. Welcome. Leave everything in the past. We're going to show the fastest way to catapult your business in 2021, leveraging video and referrals. Here we are. Welcome to the Savage Marketer Podcast Show. John, uh, thank you so much for agreeing to come on the show. I know you yeah, are man. one heck of a crazy busy man uh, being the savage that you are. Uh, hopefully you're <laughs> coping good to the COVID-19 situation. Everyone in my family is healthy and, uh, and safe. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's all you can ask for right now. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. I agree. <laughs> Out here in California, uh, where do you live? Detroit. Detroit. Ah, yeah. Okay. Well, I think Michigan, they've had quite a few lockdowns and stuff out there too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've had yeah. some lockdowns, but, um, you know, we're the, we're the, we're, we persevere here in the Midwest. So we're doing okay. Well, we're here. We, we're, we're number one over here in California, <laughs> setting the records. <laughs> we, right, right. I know my thoughts and prayers go out to everybody uh, in California. I know everywhere, but I know things are pretty bad in California. Yeah. yeah, our ICU beds are crazy. My mom's a nurse here, and she told me she's like, "God forbid you ever get sick for anything because the yeah. hospital is packed." So, and a good segue here of why video is so important today. Yeah, especially That's since we don't have events. Um, they've pretty much gone by the wayside. You know, the last like real event I went to is in like uh, I think that was in like Las Vegas back in March, and pretty much everything yeah. since then has been canceled. Um. So let's start with that. We, yeah. Today, I know you probably, you, uh, you know, I, I dug deep and I said, what are we going to talk about today? We really want to do something <laughs> savage. And yeah. you gave me videos and referrals. So why don't we yeah. start out with video? So talk sure. about how you can leverage video in your business to truly drive your marketing. Sure. So I think one of the, I think it's, um, I think video is, is unbelievable. My, my business is about six years old. And when I started it, the, the advice I got was if you want to catapult your if you want to catapult your business quickly, then do a one under one minute video every single day, Monday through Friday, and your business will grow. Leave your ego at the door. Wow. Give a business tip. I'm a business coach, and so I just give a business tip. So I thought, all right, I'm going to do it. So I did a video tip every day, and um, it wasn't live. This is almost six years ago. I did a video every single day for nine or 10 months. Um, after nine or 10 months, I, it was Monday through Friday. After nine or 10 months, I thought I, I'm, I, had, I had so much other content. I started doing it three days a week for, I think, I don't know, give or take another nine months. And then I moved it to two days a week. And then I moved it to one day a week because I had introduced other types of videos. But video has always been the fastest way for me to grow my business. I heard a study many, many years ago that said a 30-second video is equivalent to 3.5 million words read. So that's how quickly people retain it. And so I thought, okay, well, if that's true, I'll just do a ton of videos. And so, But here's how I leverage my time. So when I tell people I did that um, and, and, and other things I do, they say, well, how did you have the time? Here's how I had the time. They were all pre-recorded, right? This is before people were going live on everything. And so what I would do is I would do a hundred tips at a time. And so what I would do is I would start off with a three-piece suit and a tie. 
And I would have a list of about 100 tips. And they were all, remember, uh, Jeff, under a minute. And so I, um, I would say, I would kind of do a quick intro. And then I would give a business tip. And then I would, you know, have my closing uh, piece, which was, you know, have an amazing day and always think big, which is uh, kind of my thing. And then I would record seven or so in a three-piece suit. I take off my tie and do about seven more. I take off the vest and do seven or eight more. Oh, well, this I, is getting quite graphic, John. Right. I don't think you're, you're just... <laughs> yeah, so right, 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 right. My, no. my people it wasn't strip, on it wasn't strip, right. strip video, right? Strip Wait, video. are we talking about, are you Are you going to be an OnlyFans director? What's going on here? <laughs> right, no, but, but I would do... And I, I I would stop at my button down, right? And then that, and then, <laughs> but I would do like, you know, 50 or 60 at a time. And then the next day I would do another, I would do the remainder of a hundred. And so okay. I would then give them to my team. They uploaded them all on um, YouTube and was just doing them in some random order. So it looked like I was doing them live almost every day because there weren't, it wasn't in any particular order. And so that's how I leveraged. I would take two hours of video okay. and produce, um, you know, hundred videos. Correct. Correct. Wow. And you know and what? So, that's 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 pretty brilliant. But how the heck do you come up with your ideas? Like, how do you just do you come down and you write down a hundred ideas? You're not just going in front of the camera and like, oh, what am I gonna? What am I kind of? No, 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 no. I keep a log over X amount of like you know a, a week or two, and I write down and um, and simplify every concept. So, for example, if I'm talking about um, you know habits, I don't just talk about habits. I'll I'll do one on morning rituals, one uh, video on afternoon rituals, one video on evening ritual, uh, evening uh, rituals, uh, the next video on um, how to build a habit, the next video on uh, non morning non-negotiables, the next video on evening non-negotiables. I really, I break things down into very simple concepts. And so I did that for a long, 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 long time. Um, I had a ton of videos um, on my website and I had to take a, a, about a hundred and some odd down because of, I accidentally used a, a copyrighted picture by mistake and I, I had to go and kind of delete a bunch because um, I wasn't sure what was what. But, but it was the fastest way to grow my brand out of the gate. So for all of your savage listeners who are starting a business or have started a business and can't get the leverage, video is key. Fast forward, COVID hits. My podcast that I have is three days a week, two days of interviews, one day of a two minute tip. I had been building content uh, for for many many years. So when COVID hit, I turned my podcast into a seven day a week podcast, and then I started doing live podcast shows, which is how we met. I had you on as on a live show the other day, and so I started doing eight live shows a week, and and again that amount of video keeps you in front of people. And so when I'm when you're going live Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube all at the same time, it gives you um, it just gives you the credibility that match your credentials and it gives you exposure even if nobody watches slash listens, they're still seeing you in motion. And so it's and they get to see you doing your work, which I which I really love. And so since I started doing a lot of video podcasting, I've done less um, um, video tips, but I'm starting the video tips up in about a week or two, and I'm mm -hmm. doing them on a specific every Tuesday and Thursday from 7.55 to 8 a.m. I'm doing kick off your kind of day video tips. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because the, the recurring theme that was making my mind bulge is that every single successful person I've ever interviewed who has an incredible business, whether it's on the podcast or not, there's always a recurring theme and it's consistency. Yeah. Right. Like you have to be consistent and persistent. Right. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things that I was just thinking in my head, I was like, man, you know, what might, what might would be fun would be like putting together an outline, like how to, here's a hundred tips. Like, like if I was able to give people a hundred tip outline, you know, like here's, you know, talk about rituals or how you start your day or like yeah. what you do, or maybe under accounting or marketing and whatever, social media and all these little tips and ideas, and then just <clears throat> fill in the blank and then get in front of a camera and, you know, start changing out your outfits 
and just knocking them out like a hundred right. video challenge. Like that'd be crazy. Think about making a hundred videos in two hours. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. Yeah, and boom. it's easy to do. You need a micro. Listen, and you don't need the best microphone. I, I, obviously, you need one. When I started doing it, I had no microphone. I used my face. I didn't have a Logitech camera. I just opened up my computer and started. So you got to start. And I just was working. I'm working with a guy right now um, who I actually interviewed this morning on my podcast who helped me with my camera, my lighting, my sound. Everything is getting redone right now. Um, but I'm now a thousand podcasts in. So, you know, it's like, and I'm doing that now. And so, but you can just start and don't listen to anybody tell you, oh, it's too dark. It's not perfect. You don't want it to look perfect. You just want it to be you, period. So you got to leave your ego at the door. I mean, right on my video, it's amazing. Like I look like I have no hair, huge ears, big nose. I was like, I don't even, you know, <laughs> and the way I'm setting it up, I look, I look more like I think what I myself, but it doesn't matter how you look because it's about the content that's helping other people. And, and that then leads to the referrals, right? People get Ooh. to see you. They get to hear you. They get to, they get to touch into all of their senses, the, the, the visual, the kinesthetic, the, um, the auditory, right? They're hearing you ask a question. They're hearing you talk to someone. They're hearing you're giving them something. And so it could be one uh, touch point, 50 touch points, 100 touch points, two years of touch points. You've got to be in front of people and relevant. So somebody, even when they refer you, they go to your website or social platform and they can see you in motion. We're in the process right now of redoing my website with um, just a lot more succinct verbiage, um, a ton more video um, and and just kind of revamping it, right? We kind of locate it with more of like a magazine over the past year because of COVID with just content, content, content. Sure. It's still going to be filled with content, but now it's going to be a little bit more um, get a coach. You need a coach, get a coach, get a coach. You know, another thing that's really cool about video um, cause I, I too, I, I do a lot of video, um, and all my podcast interviews are video too. So I have, you know, repurposing video clips and things like that. Yeah. What's really interesting is when I go somewhere, which has been a while, but I'm sure we're going to be back to going somewhere soon, Yeah. but it's so interesting. Cause when I go somewhere, <clears throat> people will come up to me and they'll have conversations like they know me. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going through my phone, just trying to match their picture up and figure out who their name is. So I don't be like, yeah, hey, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I think video just builds so much rapport yeah, uh, with people does. so much faster. Like you said, you know, if it's equivalent to reading how many words, I mean, just from a simple video, um, you know, I have a client, her name's Kathy Karabetsos. And uh, back in the day, gosh, this must have been two years ago, I did something that I called a video branding workshop, where I gave you some homework to do beforehand, we came up with your epiphany story and other things like that one to two minute videos. And then I just rented out this awesome Airbnb, it cost me like 1500 bucks a night. But it was in San Francisco. So you know, that 1500 bucks a night in San Francisco doesn't get you much. But this happened to be like a really nice place. Yeah. We just sat together and we recorded these amazing videos. And one of them was sharing her story. And this is the thing. It doesn't always have to be a tip, right? It can just right. be sharing experiences. And one of the things that she did was she shared about how she got fired at a call center. She was, she was only like 24 years old. Yeah. She worked there for like four years. And the CEO had said, hey, look, if you guys have any issues, you know, bring them to my attention. I'd love to learn and hear about it. And she said, okay, well, since you're, you know, asking for solicited opinions, she said, well, maybe we should do this. And the CEO got offended and fired her. And she was actually escorted out crying. <laughs> and um, from that moment on, that, it, that was the, the reason why she, she decided that she was going to start her own call center. Yeah. And, and do it the right way. And now she's got her call center. This is her 30th year anniversary for her own call center. Good so for her. that video went mega viral, 17,000 likes and like thousands of comments on, and this is on LinkedIn, John. And I think that's a great, I think that's a great segue before we move into referrals. What, where are you, what are you doing with the videos? You just shot a hundred videos. What are you doing with them, John? So I put them on, um, I put them on YouTube um, and then, and then upload them into all the social platforms, my mailing list, and um, and my website. And and it's about just going back to what you talked about, uh, Jeff. It's about the consistency, 
right? It's about, um, you know, you know, doing it every single day and committing forever. I mean, it's not going away. The, the power of video is not going away. The, the, you know, everybody's got to prep more. You got to prep, you got to take the time and then you just got to push out the information. And, um, and that's, and that's what you got to do. And, and, you know, there's, there's a new technology called warmwelcome.com. The CEO, David J was on my show. I'm using his video technology as another form of technology of communication on my website and other avenues. Um, you know, just tons of different ways of communicating, um, but consistency. And what I find is, is that, um, you know, my starting in February, I've changed kind of my podcast schedule. So my podcast schedule is going to be every, it's always Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 12 to 12.30 PM Eastern. And then I had all these, a couple other series of my shows, which I moved now to the first Wednesday of every month, the second Wednesday of every month, the third Wednesday, the fourth Wednesday, every Wednesday, there's a different, there's a new, in that morning show, my 8.30 AM show, there's a new series, but I've kind of streamlined it a little bit. And so, and when, it, when now with my tips, I'm doing them every Tuesday and Thursday at 7.55 to 8 a.m., right? And so it's going to just be consistent. So there's some level of predictability, accountability, and consistency in it. And people, you know, people don't have as much predictability because everything's on demand today. And oh. so you just got to be patient and you got to drip it ever so slowly on a continual basis because it compounds um, over time. And then as your clients refer you business and you get referral business, you get these calls from people who say, Hey, I've been watching your podcast or I've been watching your videos. I've taken some of your tips for the last couple of years. And, you know, you're building your, you're building your pipeline and some of the, and some of it, you don't even know how you're building it, but you're building it just through being relevant, credible, consistent, and real time. Wow. And you yeah. know what? Uh, that makes me think about something Gary Vaynerchuk said, he was talking about when he started his uh, YouTube channel and it, it wasn't until like his 48th video when he first got a video that made over a hundred views, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. 48. And, and now look at him, right? Like he gets 48 million on one video. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's all about consistency. So let's talk about how I want to say one thing, pro. ignore the numbers. If your phone is ringing and you're getting feedback, don't get lost in the the number of views, the number of downloads, the number of likes. I mean, that'll kill you. I never, I never check mine, right? It's about building relationships. It's about my phone ringing. It's about my email going. It's about be, having, being a tool to provide content to my clients, to, you know, anybody I can in the world to, you know, hopefully help a billion people over the course of my lifetime or more. But if you get lost in the numbers, Yes, yeah, strategically, you can look at and beta test and see, but don't get lost in the numbers, in my opinion, for the first five years. Because wow. everybody is not Gary. Everybody is not Tony Robbins. Everybody, I mean, those, those take years and decades to become. And so if you're, if you're comparing yourself to those people, that, that law of proximity is too far away. It's like going on the basketball court and thinking you're going to be like LeBron James if you practice every day for three weeks, right? It doesn't <laughs> happen. You know what? That's funny because one of the one minute video clips that I did that was the most popular was about an analogy that I made about shooting basketball. Cause I said, uh -huh. you know, it's funny when I was in junior high, I actually had a crazy growth spurt in high school. I went from like five foot six to six foot in one summer. I went six inches in one summer and uh, wow. I had little, I had stretched little tendons and stuff. My, my, my legs look like big bird, you know? <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. It was one of those weird growth spurts, you know? And I went from being the short kid who never got picked to being first pick and still didn't know how to play. Right. Yeah. Um, but what's weird is that, you know, like the analogy of basketball or even my son who plays soccer, you know, my son hated soccer. When we first took him, he was like, oh, my gosh, I don't like soccer. Ah. And it was horrible. It was like dragging him to practice. And, you know, he's out there reluctantly kicking the ball around and running around. And next thing you know, you know, he starts actually, you know, three, four, five, six skirmishes. He starts actually enjoying the game. Yeah. And he's able, I think it wasn't until maybe his fifth or sixth game, he scored his first goal. But when he did like that rush, you know, yeah. he was like, oh, that was fantastic. Yeah, I love and it. And then he wanted to go to practice. He wanted to. And then when he actually became good at it, they got a nickname for him now. They call him the wall because he's the tallest kid on the team. Yeah, I love it. And uh, now that he's the wall and he plays half the game in the goalie box and half game on the field, um, now things are different and he likes to show up. 
right? Yeah, and, I love and I it. think that. So uh, another little confession to anyone who's listening who might be disheartened. I hired a coach back in 2016, and she made me go on Facebook Live every day and do a Facebook Live totally unscripted. That was the I actually had to go on there. I, obviously, I know what I teach, but I had to right. go up there and teach a lesson every day. And it was horrible. You know what? It was super depressing in the beginning because the only person that would watch my videos was like my mom. Yeah. You know? Like my mom. Oh, yeah, you can do it, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually now, every time I go Facebook Live, I'm easily going to get hundreds of people watching my videos, probably 30, 40, 50, 60 likes. Yeah. Um, and John, I'm sure you can relate to this. It's so funny how many times I've heard, wow, Jeff, you're such a natural. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, and I think also like I'm not a I'm not a um, I'm not an over liker. So like I may watch something, but I don't necessarily like it or comment yeah. on it. But I think there's a lot of people who do that, you know, who just don't like. Otherwise, you'd be liking all day. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, here. So Facebook says that there's less than a three percent engagement rate. So for every 100 people that like that are watching your thing. Even if they like it, only 3% are going to engage. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. So that's from Facebook's own analytics, right? So if I get 50 likes on a post, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's right? good. That's really right? good. And, and I think people, what I share with people is, you know, if you have, let's say, 100 views or 200 views or 50 views, if you were to go speak at an event and you had 50 people show up, you'd be happy. Hell if yeah. you had 30 people show up, you'd be happy. If you had 200 people show up, you'd be happy. So don't compare yourself to anybody but your own growth. You can use the other people for lessons on what to, you know, what to do and where to go. But, but I mean, I, I, don't, I don't compare myself to anybody. I do what's in my niche. I'm a business coach. I do the best I possibly can to provide great content. Um, and then you know, I have mentors. I have coaches that help me along the way. But I just I I do what I do, and I I don't yeah. compare. I strive to grow and be like other, you know, to grow into avenues that they've grown into. Um, but I'm not I'm not comparing myself to them because everybody brings their own energy, frequency, and vibration to everything that they do. And so you know you want to you want to get more people, then raise your frequency and vibration to your target audience and the avatar. Uh, I don't know why I said it like that. Like the avatar that you are targeting, right? Those yeah. people. You got to know the words that they want to hear and the and and the energy and the tone of what they're looking for. That's the key. That's the key. That's a perfect time to segue. So once you get those people, let's talk about that second piece here. We haven't even scraped the surface on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Business. So how do how do people leverage referrals in their business? Well, um, a couple of things. Hold on, my dog's knocking at my door. Hold on, two You're seconds. You're good. You're good. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to referrals because this yeah. is a huge part of my business. And it's funny because uh, Jay Abraham, who I went to go speak at an event like three years ago. Oh, I, I just had him on my show. Oh, you've had him. You, yeah. He's been a brilliant mind. And it's funny because I, I stood in line to ask him a question. I was probably the third or fourth person. And when I got up there, I told him about my business, which is my virtual assistant business. And then the, then he says, okay, cool. And I said, I'm just looking for the best way to advertise and grow my business. He goes, okay, well, how do you get most of your business right now? And I was like, well, usually from referrals. And he goes, oh, that's great. Tell me about your referral program. <laughs> and of course, it was crickets, right? Yeah. So talk to me. How do, how, what, what do you do? I mean, what, how do you leverage referrals in your business? You know, um, I probably, um, I, I don't have a, like a referral program. Um, but to me, the referral comes down to just doing great quality work, right? I'm not, I'm not someone that, um, you know, will call someone and say, Hey, I'm looking to grow my business. You know, can you make an introduction or referral? I'm a high end business coach, right? And so a lot of times people don't know they're looking for a business coach until they're looking until they need one. And then they called somebody and they said, you use a business coach? They say, oh, yeah, I've been using John Dwoskin for years, right? And so that's my, that's kind of, and, and, and so I'm high end and I just created an entry level, amazing packed um, coaching program where I do group coaching. So most of my coaching is one-on-one. -on -one. I do a lot of keynotes now right now. Um, I do a lot of group training, um, uh, but mostly one-on-one. -on -one. 
with C-level execs, um, owners and managers and, and salespeople. Mm-hmm. But I always had this, but I always had kind of this, this, I never had this bridge. You know, my dad was a dentist and he never turned any client away, patient away. So he would put somebody on $20 a month for five years if they could afford. And so I never liked telling people, hey, here's my price. And they say, I can't afford you. It, it always bothered me. And so one of the things COVID did is COVID lent, it, lent itself to um, a subscription model, right? Group coaching. So 30 days ago, <clears throat> I launched this 30-day coaching group. It's focused on sales and business development. And it's $50 a month or four ninety seven dollars a year. Live coaching every single Monday by me. Um, it's run on a private Facebook group. So every session is put on the private Facebook group. I bring in speakers. You're going to be speaking to the group next week. I can't wait. And we have a we have a workshop every week. We have a member highlight. It's a great value packed program. So why do I bring this up? Because of referrals? Because here's why. Because now people can refer me the high end clients and the clients that have uh, that can fit this in their budget. And so so so, I wanted- more, so 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 it's important that you have expectations set for those referrals. So you need to, and, and I'm assuming that you're probably going to your existing clientele and you're probably saying, Hey, look, I've got these, you know, Correct. This new program, right? Correct. It's a lot easier for me to say, Hey, listen, I just launched this program that can, and I don't say affordable. I say that can fit into everybody's budget. And so if you know people that can, uh, that, that this would, that they would benefit from, you know, life coaching, I, I, you know, not to repeat it again, then um, I'm going to shoot you over a link, but it's really value packed. By the way, if you know anybody who needs coaching too, I'm happy to talk to them as well. But it's a way for me to call and not be like, hey, do you have somebody that's you know high end that you can refer me? It opens up the door. And when somebody calls me and says, hey, I was referred to you, I can say, okay, here's a custom program for you. And if they say, hey, you know what? I don't have the funds right now. I say, great. You can start over here. It's 50 bucks a month. Now, the $50 a month, I answer anything on um, the Facebook page. You know, it's all driven off the Facebook page. My custom coaching is I'm accessible 24 7. I return every call, text, email, same day, period, the end. Um, and, uh, and so that's important. The Facebook group doesn't get that, right? And if they want one on one coaching, then they have to pay for it. But a lot of times, it's a great entree to get what they need to get. I'm also having companies now saying, hey, will you customize a, uh, a weekly coaching or a biweekly coaching run off of a, a Facebook page that you update, you manage conversation on a monthly basis for our organization? So I'm going in for their 25, 50, 100 salespeople and doing private coaching. Well, that's and really so, and, and what and I so like about... What I like about that too, John, is that, like you said, it's kind of a segue, right? Because they can come Correct. into the fifty dollars a month program, they get a taste of you, and if they want to work one on one, it's like at a perfect ascension. Correct, correct. And so that I think it raises my referrals because, like, I got a call today of somebody who's who's in my group, and they said, "Hey, we're thinking about having you do a private group for our group, just our company, right?" And so that's, and I wouldn't have gotten the referral into that big of an opportunity if I didn't have this kind of what I'll call, uh, well, not even starter, this option. And it's value packed and people are loving it and I'm loving it for the people because I want to help yeah. as many people as I possibly can, whether, yeah. and, and, and if you can afford custom one-on-one, great. I love it. But I also see my business as a big piece of my business growing into this one-to-many coaching model. And the reason it works is because, like I was saying earlier, it's every Monday at 4.30. It gets put on the Facebook page. Um, it's, it's predictable, it's consistent, and it, there's accountability involved in it. So people can kind of get it into the rhythm of their days. It's great. I'm loving it. And so you know, from a well, referral that's, standpoint, that's, make, that's making my wheels turn now because, you yeah. know, my, my entry level products, like, you know, 13 to 1500 bucks a month, right? Correct. So, it's not for everybody, but I was thinking, you know, because even for me, and maybe I'll be greedy here, John, you being the coach, and I got an idea. Maybe you can tell me if you like it or not. Yeah. But my idea that I've had, so I obviously have a virtual assistant business, and I do a bunch of marketing stuff, but the VA business is probably 80% of my revenue. Um, and what's interesting about the VA business is that there's a lot of people who come to me, and 
we are not like the Upwork or online jobs or whatever, where you're just trying to find like a $3 an hour, little, you know, freelance VA or whatever, you know, virtual assistant. Um, we actually do active recruiting. So we're actually out there looking for people with technical skills, technical support skills, and we train them how to become high end executive level assistants, right? Yeah. The crazy people like me and you, <laughs> it takes a special type of breed to be an assistant to someone like me or you, right? right? And, and my network is people like me and you crazy entrepreneurs. Yeah. So, uh, what's interesting though, is that from time to time, I'll get someone who's like, well, you know, right now, I don't know if that's really where I, where I need to be. Um, and then they go on Upwork or they go on Fiverr online jobs and they hire a nightmare. Right. And what I was thinking about doing is for the person who's got like maybe a four or $500, $600, $700 budget and doesn't quite get to where I'm at is I'd like to put together like a training program or something like that to help people hire their own people, right? Yeah. Like to show them what they're doing. And, and uh, maybe that would actually be a good funnel for me because then they're going to see what it takes to do it. And they're like, damn, maybe you should yeah. just do this for me. <laughs> the obstacle, the obstacle, I think courses are great. The obstacle with courses are that three to 7% of courses actually get completed. And so the key People don't with put the, the work in, John. They don't want to put the work in. So the key, the key is having, a, in my opinion, the key is having a live component, mm. right? And so to me, what I would say, suggest you investigate and beta test is you have, let's say, a, um, uh, you know, a four or five, six week program and you allow people to go through it live once a week because people can only receive so much at one time. Mm. And if there's predictability, consistency, and accountability in it, right? And the predictability, then they will take it in small chunks. So if you say, hey, every, you know, every Tuesday from four to five over the next six weeks, we're going to be going over every module live. After that, it will be put in an on-demand format for lifetime access. Brilliant. Right? And so that way you get the best of both worlds and people will commit but if they miss a week because they have their kids this or they're this or blah, 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 or they want to go to dinner, you know, whatever, whatever life takes them, the option is there. And they're going to, what I have found is, so I launched, uh, I launched a 90 day course, a 90 day sales course um, uh, about five years ago. And I wanted it. I've always had this thing. I've wanted to like build pieces of a business that is affordable by everyone in the world. And mm -hmm. so I created this 90 day course and you got 30 days for free. And I called it 90 days for $90, right? Who can afford that? Right. Crickets. Crickets. Nobody right. bought it. So I raised the price to $197. Nobody bought it. So I raised the price to $297. Nobody bought it. Raised the price to three or four ninety seven. dollars People started buying it. The more I raised, rose the price. And then I was like, hmm, nobody's really buying this. So then I raised the price to like, I don't know. I can't even remember now. Thirty five hundred or four thousand dollars, but I incorporated time with live time with me, and you got the online course. Then people started buying it. Now I just give it away. Uh, I give it away for free when people sign up for my sales and business development course, Boom. a private coaching course. They get my ebook. They get my real book, and they get this um, ninety day course. Well, because let me tell you, the, the savage marketers that are listening to this know, because I've said this so many times, it's not about the product. It's about the offer. It's, a right. it's not about the product. It is about the offer because you can have an incredible product, but if the offer isn't sexy, if it's not what Correct. people want, it's not going to sell, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. So, so that's what I find. And you just have to give so much content. So in the group coaching model, um, I, I'm going to start getting a ton of referrals. I already am into people who want to join um, other opportunities to do private groups. And then that will, and that has, and will lead to private coaching. And so, and, and then, and then potential keynotes and trainings, but I don't want to miss that audience. I don't want to be like this niche coach that's only really high end like I can be but that doesn't that doesn't fulfill my soul completely and so I want to be able to be of service to you know every budget period boom yeah well, now that being said if somebody says I need an hour of your time um you know I'm going to charge them for it cuz I know the value that I bring and how I can help them right right but most of my clients are long term they come and they stick with me long term and I just want to make one comment on that, you know, from getting referrals. 
don't be don't don't give away your 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 content and your knowledge away for free too much right a 15 minute consultation to get to know see if it's a fit great but if somebody says hey can you go to coffee with me for an hour or two and help me figure out you know x y and z and give me guidance of something i've been struggling with for 10 years Jeez. Um, I always say, absolutely, let's put it in the books. And then we put it in the books and I say, here's how many thousands of dollars that's going to cost if you just, are you going to use me for coaching? No, just an hour, just two hours of advice. Great. I'll say, it'll be about, you know, for just two hours and never use coaching. I give them some number like somewhere between three and $5,000. They're like, well, I can't afford that. And I'll say to them, okay, well then join. <laughs> I'll say, but you're asking me to give you two hours of my undivided time to, to do my work to give you guidance that I know will help you make hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, give you a full uh, plan moving forward. I don't do that for free. This is my business. <laughs> Someone <laughs> else. If you want to drip it off week by week, join my group. It's 50 bucks. There's another, there's another, uh, uh, he's a, a friend of mine. We've done quite a few things together. His name's Dennis Yu, who I've had on the show. Um, he, he has a line and it's kind of pointed, but it does prove a point. He says, you know, I do this for a living, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and guys, I used to, I, I used to, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say th this has been such an incredible lesson because I think there's two main things that really, really talked about the consistency and persistency of putting together a video kind of manifesto, yeah. right? Of, of just getting out there and putting little one minute videos. They don't have to be a lot. One minute videos with little tips and tricks and be genuine and authentic and giving value, not just putting rubbish out there, but giving Correct. actual useful tips. And that helps develop out your brand. It helps people develop the trust with you and helps that know, like, and trust factor that we always think about, right? Yeah. And the second piece is be very clear on what you offer to people, because if you are genuinely going out there and serving people and helping people, um, and by the way, this is how I get all my referrals is that my clients that I work with, they are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then someone says on Facebook, hey, I'm looking possibly to get a virtual assistant. Does anybody know somebody? And my clients are the first ones to go attack. They're like, yeah, talk to Jeff, right? Right. So you've got to be clear with what your offering is and you've got to make your clients ambassadors. You've got to, yeah. you've got to serve them so well that they're, they're confident because they're putting their name on the line when they recommend you. And if you, if they're not confident about the work that you can do, they're not going to refer you. Yeah. Well, not only, I just want to add something to that, not only making your clients ambassadors, but I think a lot of just, and this is maybe for another show, but making your um, your employees ambassadors. This mm. is where I think people get it wrong all the time. I mean, yeah. people aren't thinking about how to make their employees ambassadors. They're not listening to their people. They're not um, doing things that their people want to market them and and have them alongside their own uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, dot 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 brands. And so. If you don't have your internal people, if you have your internal people, your clients are going to accelerate much faster as mm -hmm. ambassadors if your internal people are ambassadors. And so that's that's one thing that I never really, it's amazing. I don't understand why companies are not um, more in sync with that, especially right now. Um, there's a company called Echo70, and that's what they do, echo70.com. That's what they do. They They work with companies to build your internal ambassadors. And that is a nuance that I think gets overlooked dramatically. You know, and- uh, As far as referrals, we're going. As far as referrals, because blah, 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 you know, you'll get more. I, I, I will tell you this, and you said, I don't know why. I do know why, because I was that guy. I was the project manager for a Fortune 500. And the moment I started updating my LinkedIn profile with my skills and abilities, I got a message from one of my managers because, you know, when you work in these big corporations, it's usually a matrix organization, yeah. which means you have more than one box. You have like one boss over here and one boss over here. You have a operational manager and you have a functional regional manager, right? Yeah. And they both kind of oversee you. And one of my bosses, one, uh, which by the way, over four years of that company, I had eight bosses. Uh, but one of my bosses messaged me and he was like, 
hey, man, I saw you freshening up your LinkedIn. Are you going to go and look for something else? They're worried. And they're worried about you leaving the company. And they're also, you know, like right now, I feel like, and I think maybe this is one of the good things that came out of COVID-19 is that it's kind of removed the stigma of like the work from home person because right. I was a work from home project manager. So like every time I went to the, to the office, you know, we had a couple offices, you know, Bothell, Washington was the closest to me. Um, when I'd go in there, my boss always told me, he said, Hey, never tell them that you work home. Never tell them you work remotely, you know, yeah. like just leave that out of their mind because they look at you differently, you know? Yeah. So like, it's, it's the problem is, is you're right. I think like for me, I'm super proud. And one of the things that I do all the time is I have my clients like, and the relationship between my team members and the clients, I'm probably too nice. I had to start what's called a no poaching agreement inside my contracts because my clients tried to start hiring my team members. Yeah. <laughs> right? They're poaching them. And yeah. well, but, companies but have it all backwards. Rather, yeah. But I would much rather have my clients be super thrilled with my team members yeah. and run the risk of having an anti-poaching policy than to have them just be like someone that's maskless and faceless behind the scenes doing stuff for them. Yeah. I, 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 and, 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 and that's so silly. You know, you know, today the average person stays at a job three, four years, right? We know that. Who cares? So hire the best. Train In those technology, people. One point eight years. Uh, oh, is that so? The Which tenure's is? way shorter at technology companies. Right. So, but my point is, hire the best, train them, have them be loyal, and create a culture that says, "Be ambassadors while you're here. Let us know three, four months before you leave. Help us hire your replacement. Train them, and we wish you all the best because we know that wherever wherever you go." will potentially get more business. Bingo. I mean, instead of like, you know, doing it, hey, you've updated, are you looking for a job? You should yeah. encourage people. I remember when I, I had an internet company when I was 23 that I sold when I was 25. Um, and, um, and I remember telling everybody in the office, I hope you all, because as a business coach, since I was 18, I've been listening to tapes like Brian Tracy, The Psychology of Success. My dad gave me when I was 18, he said, Jonathan, you'll learn more from these people than you will college. And, and, and it was the greatest. Yeah. Um, and I did, and it has been, uh, it was, it's an, been an amazing journey. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, be a business coach when I was 18 and write books and speak, et cetera. Um, but I remember, and so I remember saying to 23, I hope you all um, uh, find um, and go start your own company. And they would be like, why are you telling us that? I said, because I don't ever want you feeling like you're locked here and handcuffed here for the rest of your life. Just tell us if you're going to leave. And yada, yada. And we ended up selling our company. We had to get rid of 100 clients. And we had a graphic designer who wanted to start our own company. We had to get rid of about 100 clients because the company that bought us didn't want them. And we just gave them to her. Wow. And it was she was upfront and honest. And she's been great. She still does amazing work. Um, but that, to me, is like companies need to wake up. They need to be Agreed. more aware. Treat your people well. Invest in them. Train them. Coach them. And they will be open and loyal and honest with you. And those people will be your best referrals basis ever. Boom. Boom. That's a perfect way to wrap this one up, guys. Um, this has been a heck of an episode for the very first kickoff to season two, episode one of the Savage Marketer podcast. It has been a pleasure. Um, JohnDewaskin.com. Uh, and because obviously, uh, maybe you might have a hard time spelling that, make sure you go to <laughs> savagemarketer.com and then make yeah. sure you subscribed and you'll see this on the show notes area. I'm going to put a search there in the search bar. You can just type in John It's J O N. Okay. John with a J O N, uh, and, and make sure you come in here and download those, uh, notes, click on his link, make sure to follow this guy. He's on LinkedIn. He's on Facebook. He's everywhere. He's on Twitter. Um, and, uh, John, I always like yeah. to, especially since this is our first episode, if you can yeah. go back in time yeah. and tell the early starting John, what he should do first in his business, what would you tell him? Slow down. Ooh, I, my brain works fast. I work fast. Uh, but I, when I was 23, um, I was running way too fast. Um, and it took me decades to learn how to slow down. I'm still working on it. 
but through meditation, through um, you know Buddhist monks that I go to, through my wife and my children and everybody, I've re I really continually am teaching myself how to slow down and just um, relax. And I would have told my 20-some self, my 15-year-old self, my 10-year-old self to just slow down. Right, you'll still end up at the finish line. Just slow down a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. is the perfect way to start out yeah. 2021. John, yeah. thank you so much for being on the show, and for everyone else here, make sure you follow and subscribe. Check us out on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever the heck you're at, Google Play. I'm so honored to start this year yeah. with you and be Thanks. on your quest to perform some savage marketing. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Can I add one thing or are we done? Do it. Add it up. I want to give my cell phone 248-535-7796. I give it on everything. Um, accessibility. Wow, that's a big... Give, give it to me one more time. Go. 248-535-7796. If anybody has any questions, call me directly. I'm not into... I have, set, I, I have a ton of virtual people that work with me. I run my calendar. I'm always accessible. I give everybody my cell phone because if people are going to refer me business, they don't want to talk to 10 secretaries to get a Calendly link to set up a time to talk to me. I'm not, I'm real, I'm that great, but I'm not that important. So um, I want people having access to me. Well, that is a very first on the show. <laughs> Someone who said their freaking phone number. So there yeah. it is. This guy there truly we go. is savage. That was some savage marketing <laughs> right there. All right. All right. Thanks, Until next time, everybody, stay savage. Thank you for listening to the Savage Marketer Podcast. Join the Savage Marketer community today to get exclusive access to Jeff J. Hunter and his guests, as well as more Savage Marketer strategies. Log on to savagemarketer.com and subscribe today for more episodes.